Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to devlog number four. In case you're new around here, I'm trying to make an entire video game from scratch using C++. I've been a bit busy lately, so this video was actually recorded about two weeks ago, and I'm only now getting to editing it. I work full-time, so it's not always easy to do YouTube, but, eh, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, let's just get right into it. Last episode, we focused on enhancements to the game engine, as well as some major improvements to the physics engine. Today we're going to be working off of that physics theme and implementing some cool new obstacles and game mechanics. Before I got too much into the exciting stuff though, I really wanted to implement a frame profiler. This utility would allow a developer to know how much processing time every game engine component is using in each frame. This can help identify bottlenecks and profile your game without necessarily having to use an external profiler. I designed this class which does that through a fairly intuitive interface. I can place these hooks and it will track how long that block took to execute and then log it to a file or potentially any target. It could even render them on the screen if I wanted to. So let's see what we can learn from this data. These orange dots represent the frame budget. Since I have vSync enabled, every frame is synchronized to the refresh rate of the monitor, which happens to be 60 frames per second in this case. If the total processing time of one frame goes over a 60th of a second, we'll start to see lag. We can see here that the physics system takes a pretty significant amount of time per frame, whereas the scene rendering and the UI are both pretty fast. This makes sense because rendering is obviously a GPU task, and the physics update is pretty much all CPU. It might seem like we're already pretty close to our frame budget. However, these measurements were taken without any compiler optimizations. If you've worked with C++ compilers before, then you'd know that you can compile your programs without optimizations and it basically makes them easier to debug. If we turn compiler optimizations on, then you can see a huge performance improvement. In fact, pretty much all of the processing the game does becomes almost negligible, which means we can still add a lot of complexity to the game without seeing any lag. Pretty cool, right? Speaking of efficiency, some very observant viewers commented that my game seems to be using a lot of memory. At first, I thought that this was because I pre-allocated memory to avoid allocating from the heap during runtime. As I looked through the code though, I realized, yeah, it's not exactly easy to accidentally allocate 250 megabytes of memory. Um, it turns out it's just a Visual Studio thing. Um, I use a Python script to package my game into a standalone executable, and if I run this outside of Visual Studio, you can see the entire game uses a very small amount of memory, like less than 20 megabytes. But I'm really glad that someone pointed this out though, because it really shows that you're paying attention, and I like that. Alright, cool. So with that out of the way, I could start on some real game development. Let's take a look at the original plan that I drew out for this level. I wanted to have the stovetop damage the player if it's on. That seems like a pretty good place to start. I leveraged the collision detection system already in place in the physics engine and then applied some damage and a small vertical impulse to the player when they're standing on top of the stove. The placeholder stove asset turns red when it's on. The stove in the final game will probably have a particle effect or something a little more impressive than this. The next interesting object I wanted to look at is the vase object. Right now, it doesn't really present the player with much of a challenge. What's worse is it doesn't really react the way that a real object would if someone were walking on it. You see, when you propel yourself forward while you're walking, you're also applying a force to the surface that you're walking on in the opposite direction. That's why you always kick up dirt backwards and never forwards. To make vases more interesting and physically realistic, I created a new component which tracks the surface that the player is walking on and applies a force to that surface in response to the player moving. As you can see, this looks much more realistic and adds additional challenge to this vase object since the player actually has to be careful now when they're walking on top of it. 
the next obstacle I wanted to look at is the fruit bowl. Now, I know what you're thinking. How exactly is a fruit bowl an obstacle? I'm glad you asked. You see, if you have a cereal box with arms, you can have a fruit bowl that is also a grenade launcher. My vision is the bowl periodically launching fruit from itself, which can then damage the player. I started by designing a simple stand-in asset in Blender. I added some code to spawn in fruit projectiles every second or so. As you can see, fruits are flying all over the place. They're pretty heavy though, and they're, they're actually capable of knocking over the vases, which shouldn't happen. That's uh, pretty easy to fix, so it's not a big deal. What is really important though is, can you spawn 100 projectiles per second? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. And honestly, it's, uh, it's not performing too bad. There's a bit of glitching because the physics engine basically gives up if there are too many collisions to resolve. But other than that, we're still getting pretty decent frame rates. All right, so with that very important research out of the way, um, the next thing to look at is this toaster. Now, obviously, this toaster has to shoot lethal toast at the player because last time I checked, that is precisely what they do in real life. I modeled a simple stand-in toast asset, and I added some code that was similar to the fruit launcher, which spawned toast projectiles at regular intervals. I also added a simple animation so we can actually see when the player takes damage. It's definitely a pretty cool addition to the game, but... Uh, is that really what's important though? All right, now we're talking. I'm actually really surprised that this hasn't exploded. I spent many hours coming up with a robust way of doing collision detection with boxes, and I'm really happy that it's working this well. The frame rate actually isn't even that bad. Um, if anyone is wondering, I implemented this physics engine using concepts from these two books, Game Physics Engine Development, and real-time collision detection. I did have to make quite a few modifications to get it to the state that it's in now, but definitely I learned a lot from these two books. Another thing I did is add a better launch animation when the player is hanging on a ledge. I know some people suggested that in earlier episodes. I also took that opportunity to redo the arm animation finite state machine. Never get sloppy with FSMs. Trust me on this one, you will regret it. I did quite a bit of hardware design in university and probably the most important lesson I learned was to keep FSMs simple and easy to follow. The new version works a lot better, it's a lot less spaghetti-ish, and it pretty much never glitches, so I'm pretty happy with that. The final thing that I added is this fan object, which also appears in my original plan. The idea is the player has to access the top of it to switch it on, and it allows you to reach areas that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to just by jumping. It works pretty well, and it's, it was a pretty simple feature to implement. I can imagine it definitely being used in very interesting ways in future levels. Alright, so after all of that development, we ended up with something like this. The level feels a lot more alive and dynamic, um, and dangerous. It's a bit chaotic right now, so I may have to reduce the projectile spawn rates and just otherwise tweak the level a little bit, but I'll have to leave that for a future video since I'm out of time for now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and have an amazing week.